You're listening to the 13 Nights of Halloween. Bosk. Oh. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich. And this is Rich Oddfield. And you're listening to another episode of the 13th annual 13 Nights of Halloween here on the Dune Steve. That gets my goat. Stop it. It's not the 13th annual. See if those people agree with me. Okay. Do we have a spooktacular topic today? We do. It's craptacular, yes. Um, okay, so recently there was kind of a hubbub. Ooh, another hubbub. On uh, the internet. It, it exploded. <laughs> Who did it now? Yes, with people talking about this pumpkin spice latte at Starbucks. Yes, it's that special time of year where we voluntarily imbibe pumpkin spice lattes, the coffee that tastes like a candle. First of all, people are like, yay, pumpkin spice latte is back at Starbucks. I can't wait. I love it. I'm so excited to get my first pumpkin spice latte of the season. Pumpkin spice is just eggnog for morning people, okay? (laughs) And I will be subject to its tyranny no longer. It stops here! And then some site put out this thing. It's one of those little infographics. And it said, did you know that pumpkin spice latte will kill you? (laughs) It is toxic because of this and this and this and this and this. And it had all these things that said that this was toxic. And then, like, Snopes.com or whatever it was comes out and is like, okay, we're going to take a look at this infographic and show you that, in fact, it is not toxic, and the people that put this out are a bunch of biatches. But then, I don't know what the deal is. Now, this was in, like, late August, early September when all this stuff happened. And then, ever since then, it seems like pumpkin spice has just exploded along with the internet pumpkin spice exploded everything now has a pumpkin spice flavor and i've noticed like the place that makes the little shakes the fast food place that makes the shakes has like five different pumpkin spice flavored things that you can get you can get a pumpkin spice sundae or a pumpkin spice shake or etc there i had these at at work there's one person at work that always brings in like the odd flavored oreos you know oreo makes a bunch of different flavors well she'll bring them in all the time like hey look what i found these are rutabaga yeah orange cream uh oreos and this and so she brought in pumpkin spice flavored oreos so i had pumpkin spice flavored oreos just the other day and when we when we first met i met you at the target today and you came walking up and I happened to be walking past the M&M's thing and I reached out and grabbed the pumpkin spice M&M's and tossed them to you and you caught them and looked at them and said you bastard how dare you give me pumpkin spice and now pumpkin spice was always my favorite of the Spice Girls so I can understand (laughs) why everybody likes pumpkin spice so much the uh, pumpkin spice must flow that's right have you tried any of these pumpkin spice things that have appeared everywhere? Oh, hell no. I've been working on Abby's book, man. <laughs> you don't have time to eat. <laughs> yeah, it's Until inter- you mentioned it today, I, didn't, I wasn't aware that pumpkin spice existed. And I wondered what was wrong with my internet. I, hadn't, I wasn't even aware it had exploded. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, unfortunately that's what happens when you add pumpkin spice to the internet. I don't understand the deal exactly. One of the cool things about Halloween time is that it's also fall. And a lot of stuff happens at fall. You know, it's more than just Halloween. I'll break your arm if you mention football. I wasn't going to, but yeah, there's football. It's cold. uh, You know, it gets colder. And uh, all the, you know, the, the... things are harvested at that time and so halloween is a kind of a harvest festival and it just kind of flows into thanksgiving which is a, a definitely a harvest festival and harvest festivals is one of those things that they have like seemingly in every country around the world because you know it's it's something we're celebrating 
It always has been. That's when people finally have food to eat. And so, yeah, the the things that are being harvested at that at that time are always kind of special, I guess. Um, so pumpkin is one of those things, you know, and at Halloween time you make them into jack-o'-lanterns, but Thanksgiving time you make them into pies. Pumpkin pie is pretty great. You like pumpkin pie a lot? I do. Is that your favorite pie or just among your favorites? No, it's not my favorite pie, but I, I always remember my grandma's house with pumpkin pie because I think she really loved that. And so Thanksgiving we would always have pumpkin pie. And yeah, I've grown to like it a lot more now that I've become an old fat piece of crap. But pumpkin spice, I, I, I can we go somewhere like we did with the friggin' booberry? Okay, well, can could we go somewhere and taste a pumpkin spice shake or something on Tom Tam Creedy? Um, maybe. I don't know where we would get one at this hour, unfortunately. Probably not, because it's a little late. And you and I are also revoltingly fat. That's too. true, yes. Yeah, so we, we probably ought to avoid that. We're bad enough with the booberry. We ought to skip the pumpkin spice shake. But yeah, I mean, it's basically pumpkin pie flavor. Mm. Um, it's It's not anything amazing, although oh, apparently if you put it in coffee, people go nuts for it. You know what? If you put coffee in coffee, people go nuts. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So yeah, I don't, I don't know that I understand it. Maybe people can talk about it in the comments or something, because uh, it seems like it's a thing this year. I don't know that it's ever been a thing before, or maybe I've just not been in touch uh, in other years. Yeah, but you and I eat. Oh yeah, and you always mention like, oh hey, it's that seasonal, the you know the white Oreo cookies or whatever it is, you know the <laughs> this that only comes out part of the year. Oh, I'm so excited because they're I'm, oh I'm gonna. It seems like there was some kind of cookie or cracker or soda or whatever that you would just stock up on every year around the time that it came out because you knew that two months from now you couldn't get it anywhere. What was that? Uh, mint M and M's used to be that thing for me. You could only get a mint M and M. At Christmas time, but not even at Christmas time because they would sell out really fast and be gone. You could only get mint M&M's like in mid-November. And so if you ever saw mint M&M's, you better buy them because the next time you came back to the store, they wouldn't be there. It used to be the deal. Now they've decided to sell them all year round and they're not special. I would rather suck on Ed Asner's earlobe than eat a mint M&M. <laughs> All right, that can be arranged. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> no, they they were never special. Uh, that, so that was the thing that you made such a big deal. Oh, about I love mint I M&Ms I like or? mint flavored things, but yeah, the mint M and M's were really good. Um, but yeah, they're not an amazing thing anymore because now you can get them any time. There there used to be things like that. I remember Mountain Dew used to put out a. Mountain Dew Pitch Black, it was called, which was a, I think the first time it came out, it was sour grape flavored soda. <laughs> but it was Halloween time, right? Yes, it would come out at Halloween time. It was sour grape flavored soda at first, and then the next year when it came out, it was just regular grape flavored soda, because oh, okay. everybody tasted it, and they're like, this shit's gross. <laughs> um, Speaking of which, it would turn something that came out of something black. Pitch black. It would turn it pitch black. Black as pitch. Um, yeah, it. Uh, they used to do that, but that's gone away. I don't know. They don't do that anymore. And they also used to put out uh, live wire, Mountain Dew live wire flavor, which is an orange flavor. They would put that out for summertime. And that's not the case anymore. It's either out all the time or depending on where you live, you don't get it at all. Luckily, because I like it a lot, we're in a place where it's out all the time and so I can get it if I want it. But you don't drink soda anymore starting tomorrow. <laughs> starting yesterday. But next I, week you'll be drinking it again. I must stop. Oh, I stepped on the scale today and it was bad news. I should have I thrown that scale away a long time ago. But yeah. 
<laughs> it was the scales fault. It was. Damn thinks is I'm fat. What stupid oh, thing? Honey, get a new one. <laughs> uh, we were talking about pumpkin spice. Yeah, just for some reason. Is there something I guess we can use it as a kind of a jumping off or maybe just a jumping off the cliff point. Uh, because maybe there's nothing to say about it, but is there something, some food type thing that is a fall centric or even a Halloween centric thing? Yes. Ha Not including the monster cereals, which we already <laughs> did a special episode about that, that you care about, that you like? No, no, not at all. But I was going to mention candy corn, oh. which is such a Halloween staple and and I don't know, Gino Moretto was talking about, you know, down in New Zealand, spring is just springing, you know, in October. And, and so, uh, you know, it, it's the complete opposite from the harvest time and the uh, time to make a stuffy man and do the, the burning of, of the char -yu tree. Char -yu tree. And, you know, that he, he, like your friend, would really like to experience an American Halloween or a Halloween at all. Uh, but uh, candy corns are these little waxy pieces of candy. What would you? How would you describe the flavor? Oh shoot! I don't know what you would describe the flavor as. They have a very distinctive flavor, but I don't know what you would call it. You know, somebody the other day told me that uh, Dr Pepper is spicy cherry flavored soda. I would have never known that if somebody hadn't said that. I heard that somewhere too. I, I we got to check Snopes out. On yeah, that, that might be BS. Bull crap. But um, yeah. Okay. I mean, well, well, listen. If you've never had a candy corn, next time that you have a Q-tip and you're cleaning your ear, <laughs> the the orange wax that comes out, taste it. it it's it, now add some sugar to it. There's a candy corn. Oh, uh, you know it's funny because I we like were, candy corn. Actually, I do too. I don't but, know what you're saying, but, it but is I didn't a want to waxy ruin the joke. Taste. It, it, it doesn't taste like anything else. Well, it's because it they're tastes like a candy corn. They're kind of waxy texture it's more like than the taste. It's like eating a tasty crayon. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's funny too because we were just uh, potty training my son recently, and one of the things that you do to help kids want to go pee in the toilet instead of in their pants is you give them like a reward for doing it. And so we had we bought a bag of candy to give to him every time he would pee. And yeah, since it was this time of year, my wife bought a bag of candy corn for him. And weirdly, she bought actually she bought two bags of candy corn. There was candy corn and then there was Starburst's candy corn. And it was some kind of fruit flavored candy corn. It wasn't it particularly good, I'll have to admit. I think I in the end, like regular candy corn better, but um, well, I do too, and I think part of it is just the limitedness of candy corn. For a month of the year, you can have candy corn, and then it's gone. Yeah, it's interesting because it has that distinctive, like you know, there's the what is it, orange on the bottom, then yellow, and then white. I don't know. Or is it the other way around? Anyways, yeah, they have they always look the same. They have that same thing. My wife actually used to make dresses for children and sell them on uh, Etsy <laughs> years ago. And that was one of the things that she would make when, when it came around holiday time. She would make candy corn dresses that were basically, it was a dress that was, you know, white on the top and then yellow and then orange. And uh, the other thing that she would do was make an orange dress and then stick a face, a jack-o'-lantern face onto it. And we actually still have some of these. I just saw them the other day. We were getting out our Halloween decorations and stuff. And, yeah, there they were down in the box. And my daughter was like, oh, oh, cool. Can I wear this again? I know it, it was made for me for when I was five, but I can still wear it, right? And I said, well, it might still pass as a shirt. As long as you wear, you know, pants with it, you'll probably be okay. Because the funny thing is, my wife actually wore it to work for her Halloween costume last year. Wait, wait your wore wife? The, not the candy corn one. Made for a five-year-old? Yeah, it was the. Uh, it was made as a big dress, and yeah, she just used it as a shirt, and it was. She was the jackal. You know, wore the jack-o'-lantern outfit, 
Because, yeah, when at work you were allowed to wear a costume on Halloween, so that's what she picked. Anyways, candy corn is fun. Pumpkin spice, I'm still on the fence about. The Oreos weren't bad. I, th I thought they were all right. It was one of the flavors of Oreos where they give you the white cookie instead of the black cookie. That's racist. <laughs> Which uh, is different. It's not what you're used to with Oreos, but... It was still good. A lot of the flavors are that way that the, the, the lady brings into work. There's the lemonade ones and and the Ew. what else is there? I don't know. But they a lot of them come with the white cookies because they have you know they don't taste like chocolate, so you can use them with more flavors than just mint. But yeah, that's uh, another interesting thing with Halloween that I thought would be fun to talk about. I would like to hear people's comments if they have a thing for pumpkin spice, if they buy everything pumpkin spice, um, or what. What is the deal with pumpkin spice? Why is it a thing? Please say so in the, in the comments if you know why it's a thing. And that's that. Uh, I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Pumpkin Spice. Oh, my favorite Spice Girl. That's right. Join us again tomorrow for the 13th... Oh, see, now you got me doing it. <laughs> 13 nights of Halloween. Thanks for listening, everybody. See ya! Yes. That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Sad but true. But just about anything that reminds us of autumn is a better flavour than pumpkin spice. I personally, for instance, would rather drink a cable knit sweater spice latte <laughs> or a major league baseball spice latte or a keen awareness of my own mortality spice latte because that's what foliage is. <laughs>